What's up Ozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another Game Theory Reaction. Now today we are reacting to the third part of the four part <laughs> timeline uh, videos. Um, so yeah, the first two I did reactions to as well, I actually thought they were okay. Okay, like, like nothing mind blowing, nothing incredible, uh, nothing revolutionary. It's just quite a nice kind of like Summary, I guess, of, of the events. He did, like, skip a few things. He did have a few things that were, I, I thought, personally, a little bit inaccurate. And, of course, he didn't get all the way through, like, FNAF 3 and FNAF 6. So I'm assuming that's what he's going to do in this video as well. Um, so, like, my main concerns with this part is... Uh, first of all, I don't know how much he's going to cover. I am assuming he's not going to be able to cover Security Breach in this video. He's probably going to save it for part 4. But I'm hoping he clarifies when the sister location um, events take place because that's a very important like turning point in the series, I would say, because it's when Michael gets scooped and that kind of changes everything. Uh, it means that Baby is now uh, in Ennard and then Scrap Baby, blah, blah, blah. So kind of like, I want to know when he places sister location and I hope it's not bad, like a bad placement. So... We're gonna see. Uh, let's just get straight into this. I have a feeling I'm probably gonna have a lot to say, so I, I'm very sorry if I pause, but I am a FNAF theorist, so... Yeah. <laughs> I'll have a lot to say, I'm sure. Let's get straight into this. Hello, Internet! Welcome, Welcome to, to Game, Game Theory. Theory! And page 20 of our final FNAF timeline. Nice. It's getting ridiculous. Last time we covered William Afton's rise as a serial killer. How the loss of his young son in 1983 caused him to make... And a lot of it was speculative, ultimately serve but I quite like it, for still. For decades. It's I a good narrative. ...back together. Fueled by grief and obsession, Afton would lose himself in work and drinks. One night in a fit of rage, he lashes out against Henry's young daughter, Charlie, his first murder. This yeah. moment becomes the I'm first... I'm okay with that. ...fall in a long sequence of events that ultimately destroys William's life and the lives of those around him. That one murder gives Afton a taste for blood, resulting in the deaths of ten more children across two different pizzerias. Mm -hmm. Those children go on to possess animatronics, giving Afton his first exposure to Remnant and the potential solution for bringing his son back to life. The need to learn more about this miraculous power leads him to produce the Funtime animatronics, as well as their capture devices, robots designed to bring kids to him for experimentation and collection of more Remnant. Sure, Except okay. one thing that he didn't account for, his daughter's curiosity. He made the robots too appealing, and it would cost him Elizabeth's life. Now with two children to put back together, Afton was more desperate and crazed than ever, returning to defunct pizzerias to steal the possessed metal still living inside their walls. What he didn't account for, though, were the ghosts, forcing him to pay for the sins of his past. Mm -hmm. When last we left him, William was springlocked, bleeding to death behind a secret wall. Gone, right. but certainly not forgotten, as we're about to see in today's video. Ha -ha. Today we're finishing up <laughs> Chapter 2 of our story, <clears throat> wrapping up the Afton era. Oh, Over the next not even days, touching Chapter 3. Focus to the other main character of the franchise, Mike, a young boy dealing with the fall okay, of a good. stupid childhood decision. Because he didn't talk about Mike at all so last time. A young man whose life is best described as collateral damage, caught in the blast radius of William's whirlwind of destruction. Mm -hmm. Now, before we begin, let me just rip off the band-aid now. We won't be finishing the timeline today. I, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I Understandable. To, covering FNAF VR, AR, and Security Breach wound up taking me an additional nine pages of script. Yeah, already made I was gonna say... Help Wanted, AR, and Security Breach all together is probably the same amount as, like, the past of the timeline. Because, like, the modern-day FNAF timeline is actually really extensive when you think about it. I know it's it's quite simple in the matter of, like, oh, Glitchtrap is here suddenly, that means that Afton is back alive, and Vanny is now possessed by Glitchtrap, and now Vanny is rebuilding Afton. And that's kind of, like, the entirety of that. But there's a lot of parts in between that really need to fit together well in order for this timeline to work. And while I do agree that the last half of the timeline is a lot easier to put together than the first half, I would say there are still a lot of things that need to be clarified in that kind of modern era of FNAF. Um, and I am really questioning what he's going to say about Gregory. I'm hoping that he will get patient 46 on the mark. You guys probably know what I'm talking about with that. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm hoping that there's kind of a lot of agreement with that, but uh, we will see. Anyway, he's finishing off the Afton era today, so that doesn't matter. That's for next time. 
wait long enough for this part, so I just had to make the executive call to break this one up into two. Don't worry, that part is already written, it is already recorded, it is just in the process of being edited. Mm -hmm. It is a hefty episode. So mark it on your calendar, that one's actually going to be going live on March 25th. It's also going to be complete with a live talk back where we go back over everything from the past couple episodes, as well as having ourselves some very special Very guests. nice, so overall, very nice. that one should be a lot of fun. Fair warning though, the conclusions we've reached that solve security breach, whew, they are controversial. I, I feel oh about no. Them, I think that we've locked in on a lot oh, of Oh no. But uh, oh, they are going to raise a lot of discussion. Let's just say that you're either going to love that episode or hate it. I don't really think there's going to be much in between on that one. Anyway, without any further ado, okay. let's cover we'll see. the timeline we'll that's a lot less controversial. Let's meet Mike. <laughs> William still wasn't back. Weird. Michael knew his father sometimes traveled for work, disappearing for days on end, but usually there was some sort of notice, a phone call, a post-it, something. It's not like Michael and his He went out to get milk. Far from, but as a household of two suffering <laughs> men coping with years of tragedy and loss, there was at least some element of communication between the two of them. Yeah, they were united by that's a quite good to point out. Shared pain. This time, though, things felt different. William had left nothing. His absence was longer. There were no check-ins, no updates, just silence. Something had happened. If there was one thing Michael knew about oh. his father, it was that he had contingencies, safety checks, backup plans. His father was a careful and guarded man. He held his cards close to his chest and as uh... such, William had prepared him in the event that something like this ever happened. Normally, his father kept his home office locked, but in the event of an unexpected, prolonged absence, Michael had been instructed to enter his father's office and look behind an empty set of shelves mounted in the corner of the room. Rolling his eyes, Michael entered Coming the home, okay. He never fully understood how William was able to spend so many hours of his days locked up in here. There was just nothing to do. Most of this place was empty. He dragged himself over to the shelf in the corner, expecting to find an emergency contact list, a family safety deposit box. But what he actually found there was completely unexpected. Sister location. Father, it's me, Michael. I did it. I found it. It was right where you said it would be. The shelf swung they were open all there. and revealed a giant industrial elevator. Ah! Down in that's the actually room. really... Okay, that's actually kind of compelling. Um... Storyteller, it's storytelling wise, it's it's good. I I actually really like that. Um, he's brought in the use of the secret room or secret basement or whatever that was in coming home. I'm not really sure if we can use that because that was Susie's father's, and Susie is obviously a victim, not part of the Afton family. So I don't know if that can be connected. But I like the narrative. I like that, that it's hidden behind like a bookcase in a secret room or something. I don't know. I, I, like was, that's the real question is like, is Michael aware that under the house there is this rentals place? I feel like he might be aware, but I don't know. I, I'm not sure, of course ground bunker. But, but that was impossible. Hidden inside his childhood home was a secret entrance to an enormous underground science lair? It, it didn't make any sense. Seriously, it didn't make any sense. And yet, here it was, mapped directly underneath the floor plan of the house that he'd grown up in, lost his brother in, been tortured in. Michael thought that he'd known his father, a prideful, sad, angry man with petty everyday problems, but clearly he'd been living with a stranger this entire time. His father mm -hmm. had secrets. Suddenly, the days of William being locked inside of his office made sense. He'd been here the entire time. Where was here, though? Was this Circus Baby's entertainment and rentals? The Circus Baby restaurant always did seem to be a deeply personal project for Father. A failure of his that cut unusually deep, especially after that first location had to be closed prematurely due to the gas leaks. After that day, gas Father leaks. really did seem to change to lose himself <clears throat> even more in his work. Clearly, the entrance he had found was some sort of secret back way into the facility, one that required crawling through vents to navigate. His father had been working here, but in secret. Why? And that's when he found her. At the end of the facility, Circus Baby. Okay, his, father's his sister. And joy. Except something was different about her. She wasn't like the others. The way she talked, the stories she told. This wasn't and her eyes were green. <laughs> she was alive, somehow. And not only was she alive, she also felt familiar. There is something bad inside of me. I'm broken. I can't be fixed. Will you help? So creepy. Is this his sister? William's baby girl? But how? Why? What was this place? He dug around some old files and found blueprints outlining the features of these animatronics. Storage containers, voice mimicking, parental tracking. And was that a child in Freddy's stomach? Was his father collecting and experimenting? 
experimenting on kids? Were all the rumors that he'd heard throughout his right. past actually true? That the animatronics came to life at night? That there were murders done in all the pizzerias? That his father had somehow been the prime suspect in all of it? Okay, so, so here's the thing, right? So, there's obviously like two big split ups in the, or two big like disagreements in the FNAF series and that's between William and Henry and William and Michael. And William and Henry we know happens pretty early on because of Charlotte. Uh, and that's, obviously there was some sort of motivation before which he talked about in previous videos. Um, but like the split up between William and Michael is actually a lot harder to pinpoint, right? Because like Michael killed his brother does does that mean like William then suddenly like disowns him? No, I don't think so. Like it's really difficult to pinpoint why Michael um, and William don't really get along in the later part of the timeline. Uh, and I think this is okay. I I feel like it's a little bit of a stretch though. I I don't know. I don't I I don't know. This could be Michael's like. Um, findings of... No, because... No, it can't be. No, it can't be because it has to take place after FNAF 2. I mean, FNAF 1. Right? Am I being stupid? All of the comments are going to tell me I'm stupid. Sister Location has to take place after FNAF 1, right? I don't remember why. <laughs> I don't remember why. Um, why does it have to take place after FNAF 1? Um... Oh my god, I cannot think right now. I, I'm pretty sure it has to take place after FNAF 1. Am I completely wrong? I don't know. Let's just keep continue. I Is he going to say timeline placement? Because that's a big sticker point, sticking point to me. If, like, he's saying that this kind of... Um, this disagreement happened before the events of... Wait, no, that does make sense. I don't know what I'm talking about. Suddenly, Michael's mind flashed back to his persistent nightmares throughout his childhood. Had he been experimented on too? Uh. Tears stung in his eyes as anger, fear, and confusion filled his body. Yeah. His father's secrets were pouring out. William wasn't just a lame, overworked father. He was a monster toying with life itself. Suddenly, everything clicked. He frantically looked around the room, blinking human heads on poles staring back at him. Green eyes, his sister. Blue eyes, his brother. Closed eyes, his mom. All just staring expectantly. These were meant to be human. William was working down here trying to make believable humans, literally rebuilding uh... the family that they had both lost. The small little girl robots with their British accents roaming the hallways of this underground facility suddenly took on a whole new context. <gasps> Were those meant to be his sister? A so cute. For her? A clone? Was William building clones of his sister? They seemed to know him, after all, to react to his presence. They were all there. They didn't recognize me at first, but then they thought I was you. He always did have a bit of a resemblance to his There's the poster. His mind reeled as the reality of his world crumbled to dust. No, no, he had to get them out of there. If this really was his sister, heck, if any of these things were human, souls, whatever remnant of the humans that they once were, they needed to be rescued. They always put us back inside. There's nowhere for us to hide here. Led by the voice of Circus Baby, he marched through the now empty halls of the Funtime Auditorium. He would lead them. He would protect them. And finally, he would be able to forgive himself for the killing of his brother so many years you are in the scooping room now he got duped the scooper, <laughs> <sighs> scooper that violent extraction arm michael had seen that one in the pile of blueprints something about heat rendering the magical silver right. metal inside useless in reality prior to getting himself spring locked and put behind the wall william's methods had become increasingly sophisticated with a mechanized arm that could infuse new bodies with the soul william could finally give and take away life the only thing he needed were the bodies but william wasn't the only one looking for bodies as michael was about to learn but if we looked like you then we could hide if we looked like you then we would have somewhere to go Michael was going to be the hero to uh... help these animatronics, all right. He was going to help the haunted tubes and wires of these animatronics escape. Just not the way that he anticipated. I have something on my mind. I have to bring it up. I'm so sorry. <sighs> right. So he says, he contradicts himself, I think. I think he contradicts himself. He says that, that William goes missing. Right? William disappears. And in order for that to happen, we know that that has to be after the Follow Me minigames. 
um, where he dismantles the animatronics, the FNAF 1 animatronics. Um, and then he gets, he, he's split, spring locked, as we've seen many times in this video already. Um, but then he's saying that this, this, these events are happening before FNAF 1. Or is he saying that? No. Yeah, he is saying that because otherwise Michael wouldn't have any motivation to go. I'm so lost right now. I feel like either I'm getting lost in his timeline or he's getting completely lost in the timeline. And I think it's a little bit of both. <laughs> I think everybody's just lost. <laughs> What is happening? Scooper plowed forward, yeah. its extraction arm into his body as he heard Okay, his like all of this is fine. Flesh, it's it's out. classic Something knowledge of FNAF. I should, be, I dead, should be, dead, be dead, but I'm not. But I'm not. For the next several months, Michael's life was not his own. He was forced to comply with the tangle of wires and spirits that lived inside oh, that's, him. That's a bit creepy. Felt like an overfilled <laughs> balloon begging to burst as day by day, week by week, his flesh began to sag and discolor. He was a walking, talking, rotting corpse. Mm -hmm. Alive, but wishing he wasn't. He was a puppet, a walking shell. And while he did his best to conceal his fate, there was only so much a man filled with robot spaghetti could do. The entity in his innards would eventually leave, but by that point Ended. the damage had been done. His decaying flesh stank, turning him into a literal purple guy. But still, even with no bones, even with rotting purple flesh and begging to die, Michael continued to live. That silvery metal remnant injected by the scooper. You won't that die, you die. won't die. His anger also yeah, refused to classic. Die. What he had seen down there in his sister's location had rocked him to his core. His father had killed so him. So now he's no. going to his go find him. He killed his sister and then tortured him throughout all his childhood. He was actively trying to build human replicants. He didn't know where his father was, but Michael knew that he was out there somewhere. I've been living in shadows. There is only one thing left for me to do now. I'm going to come find you. Michael had to correct. The only thing, the only thing about that is that that cutscene right there, he's totally right. Like after sister location, he is so annoyed. He has been dragged through this because he is part because he has Afton's name, right? He's he's so unhappy that he's been dragged through this. He's been scooped. His innards have come out. His his innards have gone in, his innards have come out, uh, and now he's just a, a rotting corpse, but he's still alive. He's still going through all this pain, and he's still uh, alive because of, I don't know, remnant agony, whatever. Um, but that's the thing. Then, it's a cutscene of the FNAF 3 location, Fazbear's Fright, and Michael saying, I'm going to come find you. And then, yeah... And it's a burnt FNAF 3 location as well. I, I don't know, it feels like it's such a mess. The timeline is such a mess. It feels like kind of like that's symbolic, but it also kind of feels like that's showing us that sister location is before FNAF 3. So it's like sister location and then FNAF 3. I, uh, I'm gonna get so many angry comments on this video. I'm so sorry. Of his father, he had to make things right. Michael would burn Fazbear Entertainment to the ground. I mean, what else could you do when your skin was permanently purple? Michael's strategy was simple. He would apply for night security guard positions at the old defunct pizzeria. Oh, location. so he so is no saying it's before to FNAF 2. Smell him during his shift. And all these old shuttered locations. So it can't. He, he's squatters, he's contradicted himself. Get inside these abandoned buildings, and yet no one ever really wanted to work an overnight graveyard shift unless they were practically out of options. Enter Mike. One by one, he would take on the job of security guard, changing his name each time to ensure that no one was able to follow his paper trail. Once inside, he could tamper with the animatronics and figure out how they worked, writing about his mm -hmm. experiences in his security logbook. While there, he would listen to the old tapes where upper management awkwardly welcomed new recruits to their summer jobs. He He's on a he was search. There nowhere near the summer months. He heard the gory details of his father's franchise from the outsiders looking in, confused and afraid about what was happening in the walls around them. Sometimes, he would see his brother in the form of the golden friend Ready suit. It's me appearing on the walls around him. Mm -hmm. Except now, I like there that. Was something else there. He was no longer alone. Another angrier presence was also in the suit, as if two spirits were forced to share the same body. And Cassidy. Freddy would attack him now. 
It was aggressive. Its vengeance wanted to lash out at anyone with the Afton name. Anyone who wore a security guard outfit. Over time, Mike worked his way through the old restaurants. The original pizzeria, the bigger, better Freddy Fazbear's. He spent weeks there looking for clues as to his father's whereabouts. And each time at the end of his week shift, he would then set the location on fire. Remnant can't survive high temperatures after all. So you know what? Away, I'm okay with that. Laden animatronics that still existed inside seemed like a winning strategy. All this revisiting of his past, though, was causing the nightmares to begin again. Hallucinations that brought him back to his childhood. The guilt around killing his brother. His dreams were oddly mixed with the shrill phone calls of the security guards. But it would nice. all be worth it in nice. the end. The goal was to eventually, eventually stumble across <clears throat> the one location. The one job that would finally reunite him with his father. Little did Mike know that that day would come sooner than he expected. 2023, an advertisement... Wait, 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 wait. wait. Why Gumdrop Angel? Fright. Why Gumdrop Angel there? He's used Gumdrop Angel as a reference. That was weird. I don't know what that was about. A new horror attraction inspired by the awful crimes that occurred around Freddy Fazbear's Pizza so many years ago. It made Mike sick. People looking to make a quick buck off the tragedy of others. Off his own family. This wasn't a joke or entertainment. Regardless, he had to be a part of it. If this team was combing through his family's history, they might stumble across something that could be useful. And if his father was truly still alive as he suspected, there would be no way that he wouldn't show up here. Maybe finally. Finally, this could be the final chapter in his family's marathon of tragedy. Mike applied for the job and was immediately handed the keys. Years of doing this had taught him that security guards rarely received thorough security checks. They also liked how creepy Mike looked. They thought it was a costume. On theme for the job. <laughs> what little they knew. Hey, hey, glad you came back for another night. I promise it'll be a lot more interesting this time. For weeks, there was uh. nothing. But just as Mike considered giving up, he received the call that he'd been waiting for for years. You're not going to believe this. We found one. A, a real one. one. Did this finally yeah. be him? Sure enough. There he was, William inside his iconic golden Bonnie Springlock suit. Only now it was green and decaying with age. And there they were, a small family of broken men finally reunited. It's been a long time, Dad. Mike had always struggled with the phantoms of his past haunting him, but now all the animatronics I like that, that. what we found reference. <laughs> hopping from pizzeria to pizzeria suddenly sprang to life. Their burned faces haunting him as he tried to keep track of his father on the cameras. It would seem that William's mere presence had put the spirits on high alert. Ultimately, they were harmless, more annoying than anything else, mm -hmm. but there was one that felt different from the others. One that was more than just a mere phantom. That puppet. puppet. If he looked at the cameras at just the right moment, he could see it floating there through the halls. He could even see its reflection in the water pooled on the ground. <laughs> it seemed like he wasn't the only one there on a mission. While he was dealing with Springtrap, Michael assumed that this one was likely dealing with the spirits of this place, finally setting him to rest. Hopefully this means a happier day for all of us, Mike thought to himself. And <laughs> in that moment, <laughs> Happy the day reference. air around him released, like pressure being let out of a bottle. The building sighed, as if five spirits had finally been allowed to move on. He had the sense that his brother was a part of them. He rigged the wiring inside the building to misfire, and the dry, desiccated walls erupted in flames. It is finished. Except it was not. Somehow, <laughs> yeah, through sheer no. force of will, Afton remained. He had survived, and Mike would need to find a new way of finishing off his father. Luckily, the solution would present <laughs> Fire later again. that year. Not from Mike, but from another victim that had been left in his father's way. Ah, We're okay. talking about becoming a Fazbear Entertainment <laughs> franchisee. franchisee. Restaurant ownership and, and management. management. Something almost anyone can do with a limited degree of success. <laughs> you are now the face, face of, of the new Freddy, brand oh, of Freddy Fazbear's, Fazbear's Pizza. Pizza. There Fazbear we go. Entertainment is a brand had been closed for years. William had been stuck in a suit in a wall. The only person who legally could bring the franchise back was Henry, but he'd largely pulled out of the franchise around the time of his father's disappearance. Something was up. Hmm. Surely this had to be some kind of a trick, right? Mike, doing what he did best, applied for a franchise and immediately got the job. There was just one thing out of the ordinary. Paragraph four. If you are playing this tape, that means that not only have you been checking outside at the end of every shift, as you were instructed to do, but also I love paragraph four. Something that it's meets great. The criteria of your special obligations under paragraph four. No employment contract he'd ever it's really good storytelling. Keep special lookout for independently moving animatronics outside the restaurant. Now he knew something was up here. Henry was luring them all back. Rather than trying to go to them, like Mike had done for years, Henry was doing the opposite. He was putting them all under the same roof. He was finishing them off for good. Mike knew this wasn't meant to be a restaurant. It was meant to be a prison. 
containment vessel, a locked box meant to trap them all in so they could finally end the madness. It took a few nights, but eventually everyone was there. His father, the puppet, the robot spaghetti that had once violated his body, and his <laughs> sister, who were hopelessly devoted to serve the man that had once gotten her killed. It was time. He had been instructed to seal the doors and leave, but while he locked everything down, he didn't move on. If this was truly meant to be the end, if the remnant needed to be washed away, he needed to be a part of that. This is where your story ends. And to you, my brave volunteer, who somehow found this job listing. Not what a speech. You, what a speech. There was a way out planned for you. I have a feeling that's not what you want. I have a feeling that you are right, right where, where you want to be. be. And to you monsters trapped in the, the corridors. corridors. Be still. Give up your souls. Give up your spirits. spirits. They don't belong to you. For most of you, I believe... <laughs> I'm looking at this, okay? And perhaps more waiting for you after the smoke clears. Although for one of you, the darkest, darkest bit of hell has opened to swallow you whole. So don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. And with that, it was over. The Afton legacy died with all of them trapped inside of a literal box. As the flames danced around the office, Mike, for the first time in decades, was happy. But William wasn't gone yet. Although the <laughs> darkest pit of hell was open and waiting for him, something or someone wouldn't allow him to move on. Instead, he found himself locked in moments good, of the past. Good. The pizzeria, his son's room, his underground bunker. It was as if his brain's neurons were all firing at once, mm -hmm. overloaded, mixing and matching all his biggest fears, regrets, failures. What was this place? How did he get here? He called out into the nightmare. Silence. Just like how he put nightmares on Mike. Then they started coming. Without warning, animatronics both new and old began to jump out at him, bite him, rip him limb from limb. The pain was immeasurable. Make it stop. Make it stop. William, for the first time, longed for death, an end to this torture. Just as it felt like he couldn't take it anymore, everything was quiet again. It was as if this is where his immortality life. backfires. Of quiet, when the you think about it, began again. Dozens of faces from his past all focused on him. A waking nightmare that he couldn't escape from. More pain. More ripping. It was his own personal hell but why why couldn't he just die and then he saw them a group of characters he never thought he'd oh, see no. again those jangles <laughs> oh no he's talking about the mediocre melodies the mediocre melodies oh, it had no. all started to go wrong once they showed up once henry had made them but mixed in with their obnoxious southern drawls william heard something else it was the one you should not have whisper, killed but he could just make out the words he tried to release you so why is cassidy he specifically the one you should us. not kill that's what i want to know but i'm not gonna let that happen. I will hold you here. I will keep you here. That's so creepy. No matter how many times they burn us. That voice. He knew that voice, but from where? You should not have killed. The one he shouldn't have killed. William thought back. He'd done a lot of awful things, but there was always the one that stood out. Not Charlie, his drunken act of revenge. Not Susie, his first true murder, no. Instead, it was the one that he had lost control with. The one that he had broken beyond repair for no good reason other than because he could. The one that he'd stuffed inside the golden bear that his partner used to wear. Cassidy. They were back, and now they were trying to punish him. To make him I don't think that's good sleep. enough. It was almost like William and Cassidy's souls had been there needs to be more to it. by a collective rage and spite, each refusing to move on. But while Cassidy was so focused on taking revenge, they actually did the one thing that would be the downfall for so many others. They kept William alive. Even though fire should have destroyed the remnant that was to torture his him. being, Cassidy kept William breathing, paving the way for his escape. William's will was so strong, his soul so powerful that he managed to put a part of himself inside the circuitry that housed the Springlock suit. And there, his consciousness lay, inside a single circuit board, waiting. Waiting for someone to find him and set him free. A person that no one would suspect. Okay, so a bit of a shorter chunk, but an important wait, one. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on a second. Hang on one second. Was that a female? <laughs> Was that a female? I need to know um, for reasons. Um, no. Uh, if you look at FNAF AR, it was very clearly a man who picked up the... The... What's it called? Circuit board and gave it to another guy. Uh, it was Daniel Rocha to someone else. What's his name? What is his name? I forgot his name. Uh, if you look at the FNAF AR emails, it will say. But it is two guys. So if he's going to say Vanessa found his circuits board, I th I don't think that's correct. I, I think that's inaccurate. What he was just saying just then, um, or that whole segment, um, it was okay. Like... It's, it's standard stuff we know already, I guess. I just, I feel like he is getting a few things 
a little bit inaccurate. Or like, obviously, they, I'm not expecting it to be perfect. I'm not expecting this timeline to be like 100% correct. No timeline is going to be perfect unless it is told by the mouth of Scott Cawthon himself. Um, I don't think... It's hard because the narrative is good, right? And, and when you have a good narrative, uh, it makes something kind of seem more appealing. But I do think that there are contradictions to this. And he contradicted himself, I think, when he said that, you know, Michael, when, Michael found Sister Location before FNAF 2, but William was gone after FNAF 1. So how does that make sense? Because like, if William had been gone when Michael went down to the sister location, where was William? Like, like I feel like that's a big contention point of this video. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not making sense. I'm really bad at articulating things on the spot. But um, I wanna see what he clarifies on in the next five, six minutes. So let's carry on. Mike and tell his side of the story. And with FNAF, VR, AR, and Security Breach having so much to explain, I didn't wanna rush through things by trying to cram it all in here. Don't worry, mm -hmm. I know you've all been patient. The final video is happening on March 25th. That is locked, it is getting ready to go. Trust me, I'm excited. I want this thing to be over and done with as much as you. I am not just stretching it out for the views. But before we wrap up for the day, I did wanna talk about the big Orville elephant in the room, Mike's quest for revenge. You might've noticed okay, good. that I was vague about good. the dates and there's a good reason for that. I don't know him. There is no good way for me to make him fit in. Here's what I do. Whoa, 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 whoa. Michael you just, that's a cop out. That is a cop out. I'm very sorry, Matt Pat. I'm going to have to call you out on this. That is a cop out. Uh, I'm not going to allow that. I'm not going to allow that. Um, yeah, there's definitely a way to fit it all in. There's definitely a way. I, I think sister location has to be after FNAF 1, honestly. It has to be. I can't remember for the life of me why I think that. But it, I think it has to be. Why do I think that it's after FNAF 1? Why can't I remember? It's, it's, it's really difficult. It's like a paradox, right? Because this location, for some reason, I'm thinking it has to be after FNAF 1. But if it's before FNAF 1, then that would... It would be, it would be difficult to put this location after FNAF 1. Because uh, where would his where would Michael's motivation be? Like, why would he be searching for William that early on? Or is he just there for the paycheck? <laughs> like, honestly, Michael's motivation is the hard part in all of this. I think um, because it it where Michael's motivation comes in, where Michael realizes his father is a bad person and is a killer, um, that is a big turning point of the series. That I, I don't think that we can ignore, but that is going to have to take place um, before FNAF 2, right? Uh, or it's going to have to take place during Sister Location, as Matt Pat has said, but that then can't be before FNAF 2. It's, it's so difficult to put together. Let's carry on. I'm sorry for talking so much. Afton is the character that we play as up until Ultimate Custom Night. Mike Schmidt and Fritz Smith, the security guards for FNAF 1 and FNAF 2 respectively, get fired for, quote, tampering with the animatronics, animatronics and odor. odor. It's a weird connection between the two of them, right? But now, look at the phantom animatronics that are haunting us in FNAF 3. They use models from both FNAF 1 and FNAF 2. But that burnt. whoever is sitting in that security guard chair, Fazbear Frights, they have to have seen both locations and their animatronics. And that's not all. Their designs are burnt. It's a weird detail in the game, and it's something that the character yeah. So he's already burned animatronics. The burned texture for these phantom animatronics. Why is that so unusual though? Fazbear Frights is the first time in the franchise that we hear about anything burning down. From that point on in the story, it's like the characters turn pyro and are suddenly setting fires left and right. But for the first three games, nothing ever catches fire. The animatronics are just moved or repurposed in some way. So when did they burn? And why would our security guards see them as being burned? Someone has to have been going location to location, setting these places on fire, purging the sins of the past. We know we're definitely playing as Mike and Sister Location in FNAF 6 based on the in-game dialogue. And in FNAF 4, there's an Easter egg where we can hear the phone call from Night 1 of FNAF 1. Meaning right, that we already know this, we already know this. heard the recording as a security guard. We yeah, I would also say that's a dream theory thing though. Based on his drawings in the security logbook. So overall, there is solid evidence that connects all of FNAFs 1 through 6. You'll also notice how the character yeah. encyclopedia doesn't have a page for Mike Afton. This oh thing has no. A page for Chocolate Bunny Bonnie, but not Michael. Some tells me they don't 
don't want us to confirm how many games he's been in because that would confirm too much of the theory. In short, this guy is guess, incredibly I guess, and yeah. narrative. Mike as our protagonist and William his father as our antagonist. Mike accidentally kills his brother in Fredbear's mouth, which begins our story and sets William down his pathway of destruction. Mike is then haunted by the guilt of his past and is looking to make things right across the rest of the games. In Sister Location, he okay. learns what his father has been up to and realizes what he has to do to correct it. After failing to finish the job in FNAF 3, he ultimately helps Henry end it all in FNAF 6. It is great. It is a clean narrative. There is just one problem. Timing. Mike's quest can't really start until he's been down to Sister This is what I mean. This is what I mean. And gotten himself scooped. That's when he yes. finds out about Afton's secret life. It's also when he's Absolutely. gonna start to smell because, you know, he's a walking, talking, rotting corpse. And we know that he's not going down into the bunker until the Funtime animatronics have been made, Freddy's has been closed, and Afton is out of the picture. That all should be happening post-1993, after William is sealed behind a wall. Yeah. That then presents us with a few problems. Exactly. Afton has already dismantled the original animatronics as we see in the FNAF 3 minigames. How are those things getting burned if they're already deconstructed? True. But more importantly, we see FNAF 2 paychecks with the date 1987. That is way earlier than I think it can be. To be fair, Fritz Smith's pink slip on night 7 doesn't have a date, but it's a bit weird to say that the first few nights are in 1987, and then employee number 3 Oh yeah, no, definitely not. After the restaurant it's closed. definitely 1987. Anyway, I just wanted to call that out because I don't have a solid answer for it, and I'd love to see your comments down below. And with that, my friends, this chapter comes to a close. We'll see you on March 25th for the grand finale as we cover the final three games in the franchise, and the controversial answers we think solves what those <laughs> games are trying to tell oh, us. No. Until oh, then, no. my faz heads, remember, even though Afton kind of succeeded in being brought back to life, gotta admit, he's still looking a little bit on the dry, dehydrated side. I suppose three fires and being dead is for this, a decade will tend to this, do that to you. Fortunately, what is thanks this? to Okay, sponsor okay. <laughs> sponsored segment. Okay. What do I say? It's really difficult to gather my thoughts here and to to think of what to say and when it's going to be... Oh my god. Let me start again. It's hard to gather my thoughts here. And it's really difficult to say the right thing, I think. Because I can definitely say a wrong thing and all of the comments will be on me immediately, <laughs> essentially. But I'm a little bit unsatisfied with this. Um, there is not much else I can say apart from that. I think that he's kind of copped out of this video. I, it was, it was a good video, okay? Don't get me wrong. Good narrative, good potential. However, as he said himself, the dates are very mixed up and that is, that's not gonna do it for me, unfortunately. If you're making a timeline, you're gonna need some, some proper dates and you're gonna need it all to fit together nicely with the evidence and that is not, he, he, he hasn't succeeded in doing that. Um, oh my gosh, it's difficult. It's really difficult to to piece it together, I know. And like, I have a lot of sympathy for Matt Pat because he's gonna get stormed on for this video. I, I've already seen that he has been, uh, out of context, of course. Um, but like, he's done a good job so far. I think like, overall, looking at the broad picture, uh, this is good for like, someone who, well, is it? I don't know. I, I think this is good for like someone who's just coming into the FNAF series now and wants to know the timeline like this is good kind of right in that sense this is fine um on the technical side I think there's a lot like that you can go a lot further into this and I feel like he skipped some stuff out um and kind of like got the wrong idea on some things um and a lot of people, like, a lot of people think that the Fazbear Frights are canon as well. I might be, like, on the fence with that. Because um, I, I I think that would be a really cool narrative as well. Um, with the Man in Room 1280, that would explain a lot more. Especially with the, um, the circuit board as well that you were talking about. I feel like it would fit in a lot better uh, narrative-wise if it wasn't just a random circuit board in the FNAF 3 location or whatever, or on FNAF 6. I don't know. Listen, you're doing okay, Matt Pat, but be better. <laughs> oh, I feel horrible. I feel so bad. I hate making videos like this because I am so wrong, aren't I? I, I feel like I'm terribly wrong. I've got the wrong idea. I've completely misunderstood Matt Pat. 
I th- I think that everybody needs to kind of take a step back, breathe a second, and kind of go back into this fresh because this is an okay outlook on the timeline. I just think on the technical side, it's a little bit iffy. Um, but yeah, that's my opinions anyway. Let me know if I missed anything or let me know why I think that Sister Location has to take place after FNAF 1 because I cannot for the life of me remember why. Like, why? Oh, it has to be... It has to be. It, it just has to be after FNAF 1. <laughs> There's no way Sister Location can take place before FNAF 2. There's no way, right? I, I just think logic says that. Anyway, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done for the day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, and I will see you in the final part, the fourth part, uh, next week. So, or not next week, in on the 25th. Anyway, see you later. Goodbye.